Before Mark Bertolini became CEO of Aetna, he almost died when he plunged 30 feet off a ledge on a family ski trip. While recovering, he looked for alternative ways to manage the pain. But so Bertolini found healing in yoga and meditation, and that inspired him to bring a whole new mindset to one of the nation's largest health insurance companies. When Mark Bertolini took over as Aetna CEO, he decided to recreate the workplace to improve the health of his 50,000 employees. An essential component to his plan is an all-inclusive wellness center that includes doctors, exam rooms, and massage therapy. Workers can even get lab work done and prescriptions filled. All set. Thank you so much. There is a cafeteria run by chefs who create healthy food options, from a super-stocked vegetarian salad bar top it off with some quinoa. to a nutritious meals-to-go program. But the distinctive component of his health program is a fitness center. That's where employees are encouraged to exercise any time of the day. Bertolini has also converted a substantial number of employees to the two practices he credits with his recovery. There are virtual classes in mindfulness. Managing activities to prevent burnout. And there's yoga. When we go back to our desks, we can bring more poise and more calmness and more focus uh, to the people that we're, we're working with. And eventually, it uh, translates into a more uh, compassionate workplace. And a healthier one. Employees report a 28% decrease in stress levels, a 20% improvement in sleep quality, and a 19% reduction in pain. Imagine you're floating on your own breath. And reportedly, all of that zen is translating to a happier and more productive workplace. So when he's not doing yoga or meditating or sitting at the table with us, Mark mm. Bertolini leads a company that brings in $58 billion a year in revenue. Aetna serves 46 million customers with health care group insurance and its pension business. We welcome you to the table. Great to be here. Thanks, I'm so Sarah. excited to meet you today, Mark Bertolini, because I'm thinking I'm doing a lot of stuff wrong. But let's talk about you for a second. <laughs> because when you brought this to your it's company... It's all good. <laughs> I'm working. When you brought this to your company, there was a lot of eye rolls. There was a lot of grumbling. Yeah. Just because he's doing it, we got to do it too. It's very woo-woo. So how did you deal with that? How did you turn things around? Well, first you try and give people the reasons why you want to do it. So you have to give them the bigger picture. Uh -huh. And then finally, when the resistance reaches a point where you don't think you can break through anymore, you say, let's just say I'm the CEO of a Fortune 100 <laughs> company and I want to do it. <laughs> and then it sort of happens. I find that's quite effective. But this is <laughs> driven by a personal yeah. experience. I mean, in right. 2004, you had a near-death experience where you where you lost part of your use of your arm from right. skiing. I broke my neck and um, I couldn't run anymore. Mm -hmm. Couldn't lift weights anymore. So. Uh, my partner, Mari, um, who uh, um, was helping me deal with the pain, said, geez, you know, why don't you try yoga? And I said, oh, come on, yoga's for girls, isn't it? And I started, and she said, really? Bet me? And we went through a program, and I have to tell you, it was very challenging, and it changed the way I think about how we think about recovery. But how did that do for you? Yeah. It, it, recovery's a state of mind. Mm -hmm. It's not just a physical practice. And that if you get your mind in the right place, you can almost do anything you can in managing pain. I mean, my pain is still very intense every day. It never stops. It's 24-7. But I don't take any drugs or medication for it. I just deal with it in a different way, being present in the moment, understanding that this pain is part of my journey, um, and just deal with it. But not everybody's on board. Some of the experts say, A, it's not appropriate in the business culture, that stress is also good right. to prompt conflict and, in, and prompt engaging among your coworkers. Right. And that, you know, maybe you're setting, not you specifically, but it could lead to a cult-like thinking. What do you say about that? You know, I think employee engagement is everything in the service economy. And so you know, just look at any service experience you have. And in the healthcare industry, we're actually below cable and airlines, mm -hmm. which is not exactly a great place to be from a net promoter <laughs> score standpoint. Meaning the insurance industry. It's true. I mean, right. a lot of people don't like their insurance yeah, they're company. Not, they don't like their insurance company. Regard, yeah. Yeah. So if we're going to invest in our people to get them engaged every day, we have mm -hmm. to reduce their stress levels. We have to pay them fairly. We have to allow them to live their lives fully yeah. so that when they're taking care of other people, they don't have all that other baggage with them. But I want you to make the argument to the stockholders. Right. Why is providing this service, a gym and wellness experts and yoga and the healthy food, why does that affect the bottom line? So it's not just about the bottom line. It's about the sustainability of the business over time. So if you look at our stock price change over time as a company, it's up 270 plus percent over the last five years. 
It's largely been the price earnings multiple, and that's people's belief as to whether or not we have a sustainable business model over time. Our customers will continue to buy our stuff. Mm -hmm. Our earnings have been growing steadily all along, but it's been that price earnings multiple, and that's business fundamentals. Do we provide a valuable product that people will continue to buy over time? The bottom line comes out of good business fundamentals, and I think we've lost our way in business by focusing on driving the bottom line all the time. Mm -hmm. It's about those business fundamentals. How do we make that work? And for the most part, 60% of our operating infrastructure is people. So and what do your people them? say to you, Mark, about what this has done for them? So we, you know, we, we had $2,500 a year more expense per employee that was at the highest level of stress when we started this program. Mm -hmm. It's down to about 2000 for people at the highest level of stress. We've saved people's marriages. They've lost weight. We had wow. people come back and say, you know what, you saved my life. And it cost us $197,000 to do the first program. So if that saved one life, but I think in, that's like a huge return on investment. And in addition to helping your employees with their spiritual well-being, you've also raised the minimum wage to $16. Right. What was the mindset behind that? So we had employees who were struggling to make ends meet. They were on food stamps. They had their kids in Medicaid because they couldn't afford our coverage. And so we looked at the whole mix, not just wage, but also how they had to pay for their benefits. Because most often when people get more income, it actually goes to benefits because they lose other subsidies. So we said, how can we raise their personal disposal income as high as we can? So for 5,700 to 7,000 employees, the PDI is going to go up 45% for a lot of them. On average, 25%. And so when you look at that kind of imp impact to them as people and the way they live and the amount of money they make, that takes a lot of stress off the table for them. Can I ask you about health insurance? One of the promises that was made by the government with the uh, in, um, putting in Obamacare is that mm -hmm. it would slow the rise in premiums because you would put more people would be on the insurance rolls and then the insurance companies would be able to lower the premiums. And that hasn't happened. It hasn't slowed the rise in the rise. Why not? Because we really need to do payment reform. There's another thing called the SGR fix that's going on in Washington today around mm -hmm. Medicare physician yep. fees. That was an attempt to control pricing. Price controls aren't going to work. We have to reward people for the right outcome. And that outcome is better health. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to eliminate disease or pay every time somebody touches a patient, let's pay them for preserving the health or improving the health of a population. You mean preventative medicine. Preventative medicine, but also we have very sick people that are wandering in the system aimlessly, spending lots of money. The top 5% of Medicare consume 42% of the Medicare budget, the top 5% yeah, of people. $9,000 a month because they're not managed. Yeah. So how do we help them go through the system? And how do we reward the system for making them healthier? It is so frustrating because I have to tell you, I, you know, even I'm someone who's healthy and I have young children, so we don't go to the doctor that much. But mm -hmm. every time we go, the process is so frustrating. Yes. Yes. Frustrating. It's so to pay the bill, to submit for stuff. It's really, it, it, you know, it drives you mad. Right. So, so, Mark Bertolini, if yeah. people have problems with their claims, you can be reached where? <laughs> <laughs> Your number is? At his okay. yoga, well, class. I'm right. a, yoga class. I'm on Twitter, <laughs> at MT, your B-E-R-T, and we have a whole team of people no. that help us with this. People are definitely pay attention. Congratulations <laughs> to what you Thank you, you very much. Thanks it's good so to see you all. Mark Bertolini, we thank you.